Hey guys. Um, so a lot of you probably know I uh, spent the last week in California, uh, just going home to visit and everything, and uh, ended up uh, hitting up Tower District Records in person in Fresno. Um, you know, I usually have to buy that stuff online, obviously, but uh, was able to go into the shop a couple times, go say hey to Nick and the crew and everybody, and um, just wanted to uh, show you guys this haul because uh there's a lot of really good stuff here <laughs> so i'm gonna start out with uh some of the jazz and the easier stuff and then uh just some kind of general uh pop and rock type stuff and then i'll get to the to the heavier hitters uh toward the end but uh first thing i grabbed here um i've actually been looking for this one for quite a while because i'm uh i, I don't know i've always really liked it but uh this is uh, look to the rainbow by uh astrid gilberto um this is kind of bossa nova type stuff and um it's very 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 good this copy is super super clean so looking forward to to that um whenever you find 70s ramsey lewis records especially on columbia just buy them they're awesome um this one solar wind this is one i've never had on vinyl before i have um played it before i enjoy it uh, if you like anything else he did in the 70s for columbia you'll like this as well uh, the timing strip here is a little bit of a bummer, but it's not a white label, at least. It's a regular red stock label, so um, I can deal with the with the timing sheet. Um, and then, <laughs> this was kind of funny. So, uh, they had a, a few Al Jarreau records that were all factory sealed, and they offered a decent deal uh, as a bundle and I didn't have any Al Jarreau on vinyl, but this will probably end up being all the Al Jarreau I will ever need but hey now I've got it taken care of so here's uh, all fly home so these are all sealed so all fly home um, This is uh, we got by and then self-titled and this time all right, uh, some local stuff from uh, Fresno bands. This is uh, the Lost Summer EP by Cloud Ship. So this is uh, kind of indie pop, rock, soul. They kind of mix it all up, and uh, this is outstanding. So um, looking forward to spinning this on the turntable. I streamed it quite a few times uh, while I was in town last week. So uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing this on the on the actual home system. Uh, next, this is uh, some Fresno-based metal. This is uh, Haunt. I uh, haven't actually listened to this. Bought this on the uh, on the recommendation of the owner. Um, you know, apparently this is a more classic kind of heavy slash thrash type uh, type stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Um, <clears throat> next up. This is really interesting. So for any of you that know the Sundays label, right, it, was run by, it is run by a guy named Bob Irwin. And um, he used to be the head of reissues for Sony Music, Columbia, Epic, etc. And he decided to create his own reissue label to, you know, to, to repurpose a lot of this lost, forgotten stuff. And, uh, you know, he's reissued a whole bunch of famous albums in Columbia's back catalog, but he also can dig pretty deep. And um, this came out in 2003. I never knew that this even existed. But Rake's Progress, um, Sewer Rat, Love, <clears throat> Love Chant. This is an interesting thing because Rake's Progress only put out one single one seven inch 45 single their entire career they weren't a band for very long they were a fresno based band in the 60s and he somehow unearthed a live recording from 1966 from the rainbow ballroom and so he took both sides of the single that was released and then this unreleased show from the rainbow ballroom and put it together on a 12 inch lp and so this is, you know, pretty typical, you know, kind of 60s, like rock kind of, you know, folky kind of, you know, kind of poppy. It's, but it's, yeah, it, it's just a really cool little nugget of history. And, uh, you know, it's the, the Rainbow Ballroom is one of those things that's undergone a lot of changes over the years. You know, it's been a dance hall. It's been a concert venue. These days, I think it's a um, it's an electronic like dance club 
thing where they have you know EDM DJs and stuff come in. So um, yeah, the the history of the Rainbow Ballroom is is kind of neat. But uh, but yeah, so this is a pretty cool little nugget of history. Um, and then just on to some uh, some more general type stuff. This is uh, the Fraternity of Man. This is called Get It On. Uh, this is, you know, just kind of, I don't know, late 60s, early 70s kind of hippie stuff. Um, so I've, I've always liked that type of stuff. So, you know, looking at the cover art and especially on the back, you know, you can kind of tell what you're going to get. Um, the band T-Rex is one that uh, I don't have a lot from, but I was having a conversation with one of the regulars at... Uh, at Sorry State Records, which is one of my local haunts in Raleigh, and he was always telling me, you know, I, I, I like Electric Warrior like a lot of people, and uh, he said, well, if you like Electric Warrior, you know, there's some other T-Rex records you should check out, and I checked them out, and, and they were really good, and so I found a copy, I think this is their first record, I might be wrong, but uh, this is the self-titled album, and I think this is from either 70 or 71, but I like how it's got this little flip top thing. <clears throat> um, this one I, I was kind of excited about, well, probably a little more than kind of excited about. So um, Uni Records was a, a subsidiary of MCA uh, in the 60s and 70s, and they uh, put out a lot of stuff that probably didn't have a ton of commercial potential. But, um, you know, they were best known for being Elton John's original label. And um, whenever I find some of these obscure uni albums i'll usually buy them um and this is geronimo black this is uh, i believe it's self-titled yeah this is their self-titled and geronimo black uh i wouldn't exactly call them progressive rock but they have a lot of elements of progressive rock but it, i i feel like it's a little more accessible than a lot of you know than, than something like king crimson or even you know certain albums from yes Right, so uh, yeah, Geronimo Black's probably a little more accessible, but uh, I don't find their stuff very often, and uh, so I was glad to find that. A little bit of obscure psych with this one. This is um, this is the Fifth Estate. This is Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead, and I mean, just from the cover, you can <laughs> tell exactly what it is you're gonna get. Um, but you know me, I like sixty psychedelia, so no problem. Gas mask. Not sure what to expect with this one, but uh, I mean, okay. So the cover art in and of itself is intriguing, <laughs> but the back tonsil records. <laughs> I mean, this was uh, this was super cheap, but I I don't know. I I just kind of grabbed this side on scene. If I don't like it, then then uh, you know I'll, I'll just throw it on the Duke pile, but it was it was cheap enough that I took a chance on it, so I'd have no idea what to expect with this, but I'm uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. All right, so a little bit of heavier stuff here. So um, come at me if you must, but it's not going to matter. I like pop, even modern pop. I've always been a sucker for good pop songwriting, and this one has plenty of it. Uh, this is a factory sealed uh, 2013 original of uh, Katy Perry's Prism. So um, I don't have, I don't think I have any of her records on vinyl. So this uh, this is a good place to start, though. So um, <clears throat> California Soul Band, Tower of Power. I don't find a lot of Tower of Power here on the East Coast, sadly. Um, but they seem to be a little more common in California. But the uh, I've never actually seen this record ever. This is uh, called East Bay Grease. This was released on the San Francisco Records label. And um, it was produced by David Rubinson, who uh, is was actually a member of a uh, band called It's a Beautiful Day. Check their stuff out if you've never heard it, by the way. IABD is awesome. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've never actually seen this particular Tower of Power record before. And uh, I was also intrigued because I'm a bit of a road and map enthusiast and so anytime you've got a map especially an old map that's no longer accurate of uh, of an area on an album cover i'm all over it um <clears throat> the only steely dan record that i still needed to grab on vinyl countdown to ecstasy this is a black label abc original uh still has the insert with it so you got the got the insert right here and then uh that nice black ABC label. Um, 
you know, Countdown to Ecstasy is um, probably not my favorite Steely Dan record, but um, you know, there's there's a fair number of quality songs on there, not the least of which is uh, Bodhisattva. That's uh, I'd, I'd say that's probably the most well known song on on this one. Um. <clears throat> All right, so, I don't know, a month or two ago, I posted something about the Warner Reprise Lost Leaders series, where, you you know, if you've ever bought a, a Warner Brothers or Reprise album used from the 70s, chances are you've seen those inner sleeves that were advertising via mail order, these two LP samplers that would, you know, that would have, say, you know, 20, 30 tracks on them. And they were usually only cost two bucks. They were the greatest deal in the history of recorded music. And um, you could mail off, you know, send your two bucks in and you'd get these samplers. And they were putting out different albums in that series for the better part of 10 years. So, I mean, they were very popular. But uh, I don't find the Lost Leader records very often. But when I do, I usually grab them. And this one specifically caught my eye. This one is Zapped, and this is um, specifically tailored to Frank Zappa's two labels that were called Straight and Bizarre. And um, at, around this time, he had just founded Straight and Bizarre and got a distribution deal through Warner Brothers, which is why they included this in the Lost Leader series. But this is all stuff from his labels, artists that were signed to his labels, including very early Alice Cooper, uh, Captain Beefheart, Judy Henske and Jerry Yester, uh, Tim Buckley, uh, Wild Man Fisher, Jeff Simmons, uh, and of course a couple of uh, things from Zappa himself. Uh, this has uh, Willie the Pimp from Frank Zappa's uh, Hot Rats record. And um, it's also got uh, Holiday in Berlin, which is, I believe, on Burnt Weenie Sandwich. Um, so I also love any time um, you find... Uh, an album on Zappa's labels. I always love the um, the inner sleeves because you know it starts out. Frank Zappa was very anti censorship, and so of course he uh, starts out with uh, quoting the Constitution about making no law <laughs> uh, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, um, or speech or the press or the right to peaceably assemble. And then on the back, it just kind of goes into, you know, we make records that are a little different, yada, yada, yada. But I don't know. I've always, I've always thought this was a cool uh, company inner sleeve. So um, <clears throat> let's see. All right. So here is a 1966 mono copy that was still in shrink wrap. I've since taken the shrink off, but still in shrink wrap. This was uh, The Who Sings My Generation. Um, this is one Who album that's eluded me for a long time because every time I find these, they're just beat to shit. Um, this one, the vinyls, you know, the vinyl looks like it survived a 60s teenage bedroom, but uh, it still sounds pretty good. So um, glad to finally have a good playable copy of this. Uh, let's see. All right. Speaking of Frank Zappa, here's a, uh, an original copy of Burnt Weenie Sandwich. Um, Apparently, Zappa named this album that because that was actually something that he liked to make for himself when he was in the middle of creative sessions and writing, writing and coming up with songs and things. He would go to the stove, and according to him, he would actually put a hot dog directly on a burner and burn it and call it a, and it was burnt weenie sandwich. So there you go. Um, this is an upgrade. Um, this copy is absolutely gorgeous. It was still in shrink. Looks like it was never touched. Looks like it was never played. The vinyl doesn't have a mark on it, but here's Kick by NXS. Um, you know, one of the all-time classic albums of the 80s. Um, I don't find a lot of original Tom Waits vinyl. Anybody that says they like all of Tom Waits' discography is a liar. I've said that before. I stand by it. However, um, this is one that... Uh, I do like and that has eluded me on vinyl for quite some time. This is Nighthawks at the Diner. Great stuff. Um, here's a cool piece of 90s vinyl that I'd never seen before. I don't even remember seeing this as a teenager um, when I was buying vinyl in the 90s. But um, <clears throat> this is Under the Pink by Tori Amos. Um, I have uh, another 90s album of hers called From the Choir Girl Hotel, and I bought that one back in the 90s, but I had never seen this one before. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's on, uh, it's on nice pink vinyl. I'll show you guys. <clears throat> it's 
Tori Amos isn't everyone's cup of tea, but uh, I've always enjoyed her music well enough. Um, all right, this was uh, this was a real good one here. So in uh, you know Queensrÿche, uh, they're sort of well, I don't know if it's their magnum opus, but it's certainly one of their best records. Operation Mind Crime um, that came out in 1988, and then in 2006 they decided randomly to do an Operation Mind Crime two. And here's a 2006 original copy of that. Um, this one actually has, um, this one's also got, in, in addition to both inner sleeves, it's also got this really super cool poster. Um, and so when I saw that this had the poster, I was like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull the trigger on that one. And this album's also notable because it uh, has a cameo from Ronnie James Dio on it. And you all know Dio's one of my favorite artists ever, so, uh, you know, Queensryche with the poster plus Dio, I'm, I'm all over it. All right, this is the, quite possibly the single greatest show Iron Maiden never played. Um, this is uh, Rock in Rio from 2002. This um, is the original uh, European three picture disc set that was sold worldwide. Um, all of these Iron Maiden albums from the 2000s, um, you know, whether it's Brave New World or Rock in Rio or any of the others, they were all released as picture discs. And sadly, some of them don't sound very good. Others sound just fine. Hoping these ones sound good. I'm sure they do, um, but we'll see. Um, you know, Iron Maiden's put out so many live albums over the years that, I mean, I don't feel the need to own all of them, but something like Rock in Rio, which, like I said, that's quite possibly the greatest show they ever played. Um, that's, that seemed kind of important to have that. And then last but not least, this one was a biggie. So the shop got in a factory sealed vintage copy of Bob Dylan's greatest hits. And that, of course, has the legendary Milton Glaser poster with it. And we had no idea what pressing it was, but uh, it turns out it was indeed an original. Um, so I'll start, I cut out the Hype sticker from the shrink wrap, so Dane's full giant, full color Dylan Wall poster. And um, here is the Milton Glaser poster in all of its glory. Beautiful, iconic poster. I see these hanging anywhere where there's a love of music, it seems. But there's, uh, there's the full poster. Minty Fresh. And this is a 1C1D Santa Maria pressing, which tells me it's made with original stampers. Um, this one was probably put in, into the sleeve and shipped off to the record store around 1969. So a lot of times what they did, uh, and what Columbia was doing at the time, is they would have their plants press the vinyl, but the plants didn't press the or they didn't print the covers. They had other uh, print shops do that. And you can see which print shop it was. They were, um, they were separated by number. And so if you look right about there, you can see the number six. Uh, that tells you whatever print company it was. It was print company number six that printed that. Um, so what probably happened is they had a whole bunch of vinyl that was pressed at the plant that they were just waiting to ship off until you know record stores or distributors would order it. And so this one, even though it was original vinyl, because I can tell by the inner sleeve that was in it that this... Um, this vinyl was probably put into an inner sleeve and put into the uh, to the jacket and shipped off around 1969, even though it's uh, it's original stampers. So you can see two eye label, beautiful copy. I'd love to find a mono copy of this one day, but mono copies. I mean, I probably see 20 stereo copies for every one mono copy of this I find. And um, honestly, you know, with Dylan, it it's not so important to me to go and hunt one down. But if I ever find a good quality mono copy, I'll, uh, I'm definitely all over it. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't believe that they had a sealed copy of this. And uh, now that we know it's original, um, yeah, I'm totally going to keep this. But I mean, this thing is just gorgeous. I mean, you know, the only corner that's a little bit damaged is this one. But otherwise, the corners are nice and sharp. I mean, the back is just gorgeous. So uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely my forever copy, barring a, uh, an equally clean mono copy. But uh, somehow I doubt I'm gonna, ever going to find one of those. So uh, definitely a forever copy. That's all I got for you guys.
thanks for uh, watching and have a good evening.